Uh, right now. Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. We have a roll call, please. Mr. Loizel? Here. Mr. Hebert? Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Crockett? Mr. Stark? Here. And Mr. Richard? Here. And uh, we, do we have any minutes for... Yes, I had him attached right here. Thank you. And Do I have a motion on the... Oh, uh, we'll pledge of election. We'll, we'll come back. Oh, okay. Pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, okay, now I'll uh, take the motion from uh, Mr. Stark. I move to approve the minutes of November 17th as written. Second. Any discussion? Okay, none. All in favor? Great. We can jump right into the uh, the one and only event of the night. <laughs> Fisher? Uh, just for the record, so the board knows, um, Mr. Fisher called me and asked uh, some questions about what, it, what would happen if he brought this forward. And I talked to him about basically saying, you're welcome to bring anything forward. And this wouldn't negate, if we deny this, this doesn't negate his other approval. So I just wanted to be, make everybody aware that I had that conversation outside of the board. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board. I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions here this evening representing Mr. Angelo Sioka uh, regarding a uh, request for a variance, which is sort of, and I'll explain this in a moment, extension of the previous variance. Uh, Mr. Sayoka apologizes for not being here. He had a uh, um, planned surgery this past weekend, so he's not in commission for a little while. Um, and I'll try to talk over the crowd noise, so we'll see what happens. Um, essentially, I will uh, we'll keep this very brief. You've obviously seen this project several times or this location several times. We did receive, it by way of background, a, uh, a unanimous approval from the board back in May. Uh, for the house that, as you see before you here, is to go on this particular property. Uh, I should mention that uh, as of today and as of the past six weeks, that house, the, the old cottage that was on that property for almost 80 years is now gone. Uh, so as Mark, as the uh, chairman had mentioned, um, and as Brian has indicated uh, in his notes uh, to the board, the, we got the variance that is in May that is still applicable. So really the only reason toward this end that we're here right now is to uh, uh, request the approval to move this house a little bit further forward on the lot, forward meaning toward Vesper Street. Nothing else changes. The lot is the same, the house design is the same, the location from side to side is from Bayview basically is, is the same. Uh, all we're requesting is that we do move that uh, a little bit further forward by about 12 feet is what we're looking for. Um, I'm glad that uh, Brian was able to, uh, that the codes officer was able to find this um, uh, these placards, the, one that Mr. C the ones that Mr. Sioka had actually uh, were in the house when it was demolished, so those are no longer there. Uh, and it was just fortuitous that uh, Brian was able to come up with these. This is perfect. This is what I wanted to show everybody. Mm -hmm. In essence, uh, the house that you see before you, which is this house right here, um, is on this depiction, on this rendition, uh, is actually located in the exact same location as the previous cottage was on the lot. So when we got the approvals from the board this past May, that house actually sits about uh, 17 feet further back, on, or the house will sit under the provisions of the current zoning, about 17 feet further back into the lot, meaning this direction. Um, in essence, what that means, and that was fine. When we were here in May, um, the, the existing uh, regulations at the time that governed that area of Higgins Beach uh, re required that uh, well, it didn't require anything specifically. We had asked for, because the building envelope with a lot that has two fronts like this one was incredibly tiny, couldn't even put a shed in it. Uh, and that's why we came before the board. And uh, what we did was we re requested at that time a 20-foot setback from Vesper Street, uh, which the board did uh, grant to us. Uh, and that was under the basic provision of a limited reduction, would ha we didn't, which we didn't ask for, but had we, had we actually um, uh, had that been copacetic for us to be able to do that, but it wasn't because we were in the Shoreland zone, we only showed the 20 feet because it would have fit under a limited reduction otherwise. So we were very happy with the 20 feet at that point. And very honestly, we're happy with where the building is right now. But 
uh, in that we can continue to build it. Uh, and by the way, uh, just for a way of background, all the materials that uh, Mr. Sioka uh, has for this building have already been purchased and are ready to go, and the pile driver is actually standing by. Uh, the piles are already off-site, but uh, he's ready to stand by to come in and drive those piles into that area. Uh, as you may recall, many of the, this house and many of those in that area are in an erosion hazard area zone along with several other overlay zones that require the structure to be elevated on piles. None of that's going to change. The issue is more um, given the character of the neighborhood and now with the provisions of the relatively newly passed uh, regulations for Higgins Beach, we'd like to be able to take this structure and again just move it closer to the street. Now the, one of the interesting things about this, one of the more interesting things about it as far as I'm concerned, and it is in your letter, your packet, is that uh, this section of Vesper Street, the pavement or the traveled way, is not actually centered in the right of way, uh, which is not, it's not that unusual. You don't see it typically. Uh, it's more in neighborhoods such as this one where the, the streets basically kind of took over from where the cart paths and the pathways were 100 years ago. So uh, where most streets, or almost all streets today, are centered within the rights of way within which they're located, uh, back then the streets kind of went wherever they went. So in this case, when you're looking this, on this side, when you look um, on the left-hand side as you're going toward the water, the actual property line is about a little over three feet away from the edge of the pavement, which is in this section right over here. On the other side of the pavement, it's almost 17 feet away. Nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly legal as long as the traveled way is within the right of way. Uh, the reason I mention this is that uh, it throws off the perspective of anybody who's taking a look at this area in that if the right of way is this wide and the traveled way is this wide, we've now got a traveled way switched or, or located all the, almost all the way to one side. The point there is that uh, regardless of what the situation is on this side of the road where Mr. Sioka has his house, uh, even if it were, even if a structure were put right on the line, which is not what we're requesting, they'd still be 17 feet away from the uh, from the actual road, which is a fairly considerable amount of property. There are a couple of other uh, roads down there that in Higgins Beach that are like that, more toward the end of the peninsula, um, and uh, but this is one of the more obvious or egregious examples in terms of a street not being centered within its right of way. So the point being there is that when you see this house that was in the position of the old cottage, um, which is not even, we're yet even asking that to be a little bit further, the, what I'm asking for this evening is to have the, the house even be a little bit further than back than what you see right here, you get a pretty good perspective of where the other houses on the road are lined up relative to the one that's right here. There's also a photograph that's in your packet that is taken the same perspective, but back further along, uh, back this direction basically from uh, Vesper, which shows um, from a perspective standpoint where some of the other houses uh, back in this section of the block are actually located. And most of those houses are actually uh, as close or closer than the old cottage that was there, closer to the right of way that is, or their front property line. The point being is that of the literally the 30 properties that are on Vesper Street, <coughs> two of which are back lots that have just a tiny little driveway access, so 28 houses or house lots that are on there, all of which have been, uh, excuse me, there's one lot that has not yet been developed, but the other 28 houses are all considerably closer to the, uh, uh, the right of way than the variance that we got approved for this house in May. Bottom line, again, very honestly, is if we can't get it, we're fine. We're still going to build the house anyway. But given the new provisions where, uh, and Brian can certainly espouse uh, this a little bit more, explain this a little bit more if you wish, uh, where the intent of the, the new provisions was basically to create more of the kind of the village aspect of things, which tends to take structures, the residential structures, the intent meaning to move them closer to the rights of way, uh, so they're a little bit more to the street that older homes and older neighborhoods would, uh, would typically be, and that's what uh, most of Higgins Beach is like. And that also then opens up the back backyard, not only for use for the individual, but also for a visual corridor between structures. So that when you typically are in a backyard and you look down through different properties, yes, people can put landscaping and fencing there, et cetera, but the basic intent is to keep those houses a little bit forward on those lots. Toward that end, as far as character is concerned, that's all we'd like to do is just to move it forward a little bit. Um, so if we keep it at the 20 feet back uh, from the edge of the right-of-way or the property line, 
on this property, this house again will typically move back all the way into this section. So it's going to be more toward the middle and back of the lot. It will actually have a front yard that will then be 37 feet from the edge of pavement, not the edge of the right of way, but the actual edge of the pavement. That's a pretty considerable amount of land as a front yard. Nothing wrong with that, but again, if the intent of the regulation basically is to try to uh, encourage structures to be built a little bit closer to the right of way, then that's what we would like to do. Um, by doing so, by moving it into this position or not even quite as close as this, it actually keeps that visual corridor when anybody is either walking down Bayview or driving or whatever, and you glance toward the water, if the house is a little bit further forward as we're proposing, you've got a view corridor that goes right down to the water. If we don't and we build it where the variance was granted for us in May, that house is going to be smack dab in the middle of the lot, actually a little bit more toward the rear of the lot, and that corridor, you won't have that corridor because the house will be in the way. So I don't mean to oversimplify things, and in the interest of brevity this evening, I'd, I'd like to open to uh, questions or comments or whatever and go from there. Mr. Longstaff, uh, with the changes that have taken place, uh, why don't we let you take the floor and discuss what the town's requirements on this new rule are and where sure. we're in bumps. Um, I was just trying to bring the aerial up here so that you could let me just turn that around. There. So just for reference, I don't know why there's a red mark up here, but this this is the, I don't know if you can see where Chioka's property is right there on the corner. Excuse me. There, right there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, as of last Wednesday, um, I believe it was Wednesday, yeah. Yeah. the uh, council voted uh, to approve the new character based code for, or zoning ordinance rather, for Higgins Beach. And so, as Jim, as Mr. Fisher was, was mentioning, the the new code does allow for a closer setback to the streets. It's, however, it's conditional upon a few things. And as as you folks have time to absorb this code a little more, I know Mr. Loisel is somewhat familiar with it. I think Mr. Richard might have looked at it, but I I don't think as a board you all are all that familiar with it yet, and we're all getting <laughs> getting more familiar with it. Um, but as you become more familiar with it, these these concepts will will be a little more um, easy to, to grasp. So right now they're going to feel a, a lot foreign uh, to you. Where this used to be the R4 district, the street setback was 30 feet, the front yard setback I should say was 30 feet, and there are two front yards on the corner lot on Vesper and Bayview. Now is, is a different district. It's uh, now called the Coastal Residential District, okay? and we have now primary front setback and secondary front setback, okay? So your primary front setback in this case, because the address is Vesper Street, is, is Vesper Street. That's your primary front street. And the setback is now a range of a minimum of 18 feet from the, from the front property line or street right of way, one and the same, 18 feet to 21 feet. So you've got to be at least 18 feet, but no more than 21 feet. <coughs> so with the current, the current <laughs> appeal that's been granted, he's right smack dab in the middle uh, of that range. Okay. He could, without variance approval, move it to 18 feet. Okay. Wouldn't require any action by the board under the new code. But isn't that if it has a front porch? 18 feet is for the principal building placement. Okay. So principal building is sort of the main box of the house, if you will. And, and you've all seen plenty of pictures, and, and there's some even right here. You can see as you look down uh, the photo with the uh, with the outhouse, <laughs> the porta potty <laughs> on it. Um, if you look, if you look to the left, <laughs> you, you've improved it. Um, <laughs> if you look to the left, you'll see some houses that have front porches on them. Okay. Those front porches can now be within eight feet of the right of way. So, so, so if you want to add a front porch, you can put it on there, and it can be eight feet. If you don't have a front porch, you're back to 18. So, 
So as I review this appeal, I, I, and I, I only point out the facts, Mr. Chioka's house does not fit the character model of having a front porch. We talked to Mr. Chioka about that several months ago as we were working through some of the aspects of the new code, and that's just not a design that he's interested in. He's just, that's not mm -hmm. his, <laughs> his desire. His desire is what's drawn there. Unfortunately, that house does not lend itself to a front porch, nor does he want one. So, from a technical perspective, he can get the 18 feet to the 21 feet on, on Vesper Street. On Bayview, because it's a secondary street, he can go to 12 feet from the right-of-way line, as, as little as 12 feet and as much as 21 feet. So you get a, a much wider range on your secondary street because it's treated more like a side okay. setback. Okay, that's always been a big complaint throughout town, not only in the beach communities but throughout town. That we've always considered it to, a corner lot to have two frontages. Some communities deal with that in a different manner. Uh, we have not until now. In in Higgins Beach, we now make the distinction between a primary and a secondary street. And that's only in Higgins Beach. It's right? Only in Higgins Beach. Anything that I'm talking about right now is only in Higgins Beach for, yeah, a bunch of phone calls. for everyone that's <laughs> listening. It's only Higgins Beach right now. And um, so, so just just to point out again, um, without any action from the board, Mr. Chioka would have the right to locate his feet, his house, two feet closer to Vesper Street than what his um, variance appeal was granted. Okay. And may I ask a clarification? The photo that's shown, what does that put the front of the house at? Eight feet. As shown there? As shown here. Yep. The variance that was granted was for seven feet, but... No, that's for the eave. For the eave. So the, 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 house, the facade yep. of the, of the, of the okay. house Thank itself. You. And the steps do not count in that? In the new ordinance, steps are allowed to ex encroach into that setback but cannot be any closer than, you know, now I'm going to forget, three feet, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it, was, it was either two feet or three feet, and I couldn't remember. So you can get a five-foot change from eight feet to three feet. Just for the steps. Just for the steps. Yeah, and okay. they can only be the minimum necessary to access the porch. Or and what about the platform that I see on the photo where the steps come down onto it? It looks like there's a small platform or deck or flat surface. No, there's a, uh, you mean over the top? or No, I'm just going only by the photo that you have. That you can take a look at the, uh, in your packet. Yeah. You'll see the back, the side of the back. Um, you'll see that there is a quote unquote sort of a port. It's not a farmer's port, it's an indentation port. It's right. Here. It's an entryway, basically. Yeah. And then there's a set of steps, and, and it looks like a visible break. And then it looks like there's some kind of a flat spot on the ground that looks like a deck to me? Is that? No, there's nothing on the ground. Okay. It's just the steps right So the, the platform grade. would be considered the stoop, okay? Okay. And, and the new ordinance deals with canopies and stoops and okay. side wings, and that is allowed to encroach four feet. That platform can encroach four feet okay. into the setback. Okay. <coughs> So, so the stairs can go to three feet, as close as three feet. The stoop can go four feet. So you have to play with that as you're designing your building, which means that you know if you had if you had stairs that were going to be three or four steps, you'd need to push your house back in order to meet all of those right. criteria. But, it but all this is contingent upon, upon the building meeting the criteria as the standard is today. Yes not when it was back in May. Right. We're reviewing this under the ordinance as it is today. The variance that you granted in May, is, as Jim said, is in, in correctly so, is still in effect regardless of uh, which, whichever way this goes. That one, unless you approve a new variance, and then that one is, is abandoned. Yeah. See, my, in, met, in my head, I'm struggling it. with the building I see is not in compliance with today's structural standard. Uh, design standard. Design standard. Excuse me. Um, so the way where it sits, whether I agreed to it or not, it doesn't meet the design standard. So if I approved it, I'd be going against the ordinance as it sits today because the building doesn't meet that design standard. 
Yeah, 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 I get what you're saying. In its location. As if it was a porch there and he was moving it. And, and that's correct. And right. Therefore, that is why we're back, uh, Mr. Fisher is back to the board for another variance because okay. it doesn't meet the permitted allowed setbacks for the type of the structure and the character of that structure. It, right. it, it doesn't conform. So in my head I'm thinking, do we, do we need to decide whether we can hear it as shown under today's ordinance? Or do we hear it, or do we uh, agree to it as it was in May, and make it fall back to that criteria? Well, I guess what I'm saying is, as I see the design right now, it doesn't meet the design standard as the standard is in front of us today. Well, either way, it was non-conforming. Right. The, the so, so, non so that sort of. I'm sorry. The, yeah. Sim simpler than the, the whole argument, and I think it comes down to being. The plan is going to stay the same. The question is that now that the town has made a different change as far as frontage, mm -hmm. do we want to allow that house to be pushed up? We probably could without any problem if it was a porch that was there, and we probably would could justify that. Right. Oh, if it was we a porch, you wouldn't have to. It yeah. would meet the standard. He would meet the standard. But it's not. Right. So right. then you come back to the steps. Well, the same applies. You can bring it two feet up, and the steps can go from there. But the challenge that we run up against is we don't have to review the whole package. And one of the questions, I'll be candid, I asked uh, uh, Mr. Longstaff, is, is um, what is the town? Is, would the town be happier one way or the other? And the town is kind of neutral. Yeah. So if the town was saying, yeah, we want it more like that, it would be a lot easier. If the town was saying no, but they're neutral on it. So but to be clear, that it doesn't matter what the town wants. Right. No, it's right. Just, it's just and I'm just trying to think what is the, the most In this legal case, you guys are the town. Right. right. What is the legal decision? What's the right decision legally? Right. And, and yeah. there's some room there to play, and it makes sense for the community, and it makes sense for, and I would say that we could tie it back to the original variant. Mm -hmm. But I think you get two problems. One is that uh, the, the porch thing is pretty well defined. I didn't... Uh, I don't have any idea. It did a real good job. What is the definition of a porch? Um, is that covered? I don't know. That we, we don't actually define what those terms... It, the porch can be... The porch is covered. It's not a deck. Okay. It's not an open deck. It's covered. It can be enclosed or it can be open. Can it be two stories? It cannot be two stories. Okay. okay. One story covered surface. One story. Um, there are different types of porches. You can have what's called an engaged porch, which basically is kind of inset into the building um, and, and is covered by the, the main roof, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you can also have, I think the other type what's in here is the, um, the projecting porch, which is kind of the one that we're talking about. Yeah. And then there's the integral porch, which is really only um, applicable to the bungalow-style home. In a bungalow style home, the roof starts at the ridge and comes down over the porch. Yeah. It's all one. It's but in no way we couldn't consider this a porch if that's where you're going, Mr. Chair, because this is an overhang of the existing. It, uh, it upper doesn't porch fit the building. definition. Right. Of a an entryway, it's, yes. It's an entryway yeah. of sorts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, some people could look at it and call it. Uh, Mr. Chilka may refer to it as his porch. <laughs> you know, right. But it's not, according to the character based standards that are in the or ordinance, it doesn't fit the design of a porch. If we go back to the, the engaged porch, so for, for an option from Mr. Sioka, he could essentially have that first floor porch. He could, he could move his house forward just by creating a first floor engaged porch with living space above it, correct? Is that what you Without mean? living space above it. Without living space or with it can't be an integral part of the building, I don't believe. It has to be a one-story porch with a roof over it. Okay. If it's an engaged porch, it can, only, it can only encroach into setbacks as part of a rear addition, a side wing, or an estate wing. It can't Not be a front on porch. the primary porch. Okay. Yeah. okay. Which is where all engaged porches are. Mm -hmm. Most of them are in the front, but they just... Right, but, <coughs> but if you're going to have an engaged porch, then it's going to be the same the setback as the house. Yeah, that's right. So, so as I look at it, essentially, just a, it's a clear-cut question of if he meets the hardship criteria. That, that's where I was getting at. Is is just if there's really, I mean, if if the appeal in May had never even happened, 
and they were in Mr. Chioka was coming uh, with with this to us tonight for the first time. Just just forget about May. It wouldn't pass the hardship. Well, well, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you you review it the same way you reviewed the one in May. But right. If you just pretend the one in May didn't happen, you're looking at the same. It's a non con. The proposal is for a non-conforming structure. Right. Otherwise, he wouldn't need to be here for for the variance. Yeah, that's exactly right. The, the facade of the house, as Brian had mentioned, would be 18 feet. If, if we were not to come to the board at all, just go in for a building permit, the closest we could come to Vesper Street would be 18 uh, without a porch. And with a porch, it, it allows a 10-foot porch on that that could go about down conceivably to 8 feet. So what we're asking for in this case is, because there isn't a porch per se, I mean, let's call it what it is, it's not the farmer's porch, it's the extended porch. Right. Um, we're just asking to be able to bring that overall structure forward in conjunction with the variance, again, otherwise we wouldn't be here at all, um, <coughs> to bring the structure to the point where any other structure without a variance that had a porch on it would be. So from a physical perspective, there is, from my per opinion, there's no change in terms of position on the lot for whether it's a porch or not, there's still a structure there. However, pursuant to the, to the, uh, the new regulations, you've got to have that one story structure covered, et cetera, and then the facade of the house, whatever the house looks like at that point, would be 18 feet further back. And again, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, that's okay if that's what the, the feeling of the board is. Obviously, we'd like to be able to move that forward primarily because not that it's not going to be a functional lot or a functional house, it's just going to look weird. Um, because with the new regulations, I mean, a lot of houses at Higgins Beach have already been done, as you know, we've been here and many others have been here before you for those um, remodeling and, and redoing of other projects or other properties. About a third of them have been redone completely uh, in, in uh, Higgins Beach, which leaves a fair, and some of them are relatively newer than that anyway. So there's probably a good quarter of the overall homes down there that are relatively old and are probably at some point, well, they may not come before you now because the regulation has changed like that, which is the intent. Um, but the character of the neighborhood is going to bring those structures closer to the road. Toward that end, and in particular because the traveled way is offset so much within the right-of-way, it gives the impression for anybody who's viewing this that the front yards of these houses, even if we come up to the eight feet, is huge. So even if we do come up to the eight feet, which is what we're asking for, we're still going to have a 25-foot expanse between the edge of the pavement and the front of the house, or anybody's house for that matter. Um, so what we're talking about here, and again what you see here, is if that were the position of the, uh, which is essentially what we're asking for. So if this house were placed as you see it right here, you can see that you can get a car and a half practically parked on the lawn, as it were, in front of that house. If we don't get it, that's okay. If we do get it, that's great, because we'll be end up moving this house much closer, as one of the photographs shows you, uh, to align with all the other houses. Uh, literally one other house sits a little bit further back on that side of the road up in this section up in here. All the other houses are very, very close to the road. Actually, you can see it on the photograph, um, but they're, they're very, very close to the road, and probably now with the new regulation, they're going to stay that way. So the whole essence of really why we're here right now is just to request what we think would be a common sense and what I think the town would like to see <coughs> in terms of the visual impact from the roads between these houses and in their backyards. Basically, that's it. My thoughts is I, I agree with all that, Mr. Fisher. I, I, unfortunately, that I, I just don't think it, because of those, just because of this particular circumstance for his residence, the, 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 it does look a little odd, I agree. I just don't, I just don't see how it could pass the hardship criteria. That's the, that's the, that's where I'm at. You know, I mean, I know lo if, if it, if it was about logic, I would say absolutely. I would agree 100% with you. Let's move it forward because being keeping, I just, I just can't see how it could, I don't know, that's just my thought. I know what he's trying to do, I can see what he's trying to do in it. Except the I reason why I, we're bound to right, the satisfying reason, these criteria. The reason why I told him I was obviously welcome to come forward is number one, he's obviously welcome to come forward. But number two, I hadn't seen or read any of the changes. The porch issue causes a problem for me personally because it, 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 it would, I would have an easier time falling back onto the old appeal and saying, tying it back to the old appeal and allowing it to go forward if it met the other requirements of the changes so that it's consistent completely 
with the rule. The problem I see is it's not completely, it, it's, we're only giving them half. And so the dilemma that I see, as opposed to what I had in my head when I talked to Mr. Fisher earlier, is that it would need to meet both of those things. You can't pick and choose. I, I agree. I agree 100 percent with that. That that's kind of my problem. I mean, I'd be straight up, you know. I, and I probably misled it, you on that. No, that, that wasn't a mislead. You know, I, again, I'll be honest and say we didn't come here with any great expectation to be able to do this. Primarily because we know we can build it and it's ready to be built, like within the next week or start building. Um, it was just more of a. It, it looks better when it's forward, subjectively. Uh, and Mr. Sioka was saying it is actually, in one respect, it's going to partially, by moving it forward, it actually impugns his view a little bit because it moves the house forward so that he's got a, this house right here right, is right in front of his view. Uh, where it is now, back a little bit, he's actually got more of a view down that back corridor toward the water. Neither here nor there, that's a personal issue as far as that particular property is concerned. It was really just to try to bring it forward to keep it in compliance with what the neighborhood looks like because it's just going to, all the other houses are forward, this one's going to be smack dab in the middle and it's just going to look a little oh, unique. Can I ask a question? Sure, um, would Mr. Chioka be interested in moving it to two, to two extra feet? Very probably. I mean, yeah. it, it's not, <laughs> you know, it's not 10 feet, but it's, it's sure. a couple of feet and maybe every foot counts and he could do that without any action. We don't have to change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. would, would that bring the, the main structure up to there and then the steps would still be further forward or is that to the, to the edge of the steps? That would be to the facade of the main structure. Okay. Principal structure. Well, actually be to the yeah. overhang if there's right. an overhang yeah. and yeah. I can't, I okay. guess there's a small no. overhang there, not much. Um, I was just curious if that would I think so. I mean, I haven't spoken to him directly, but it's it's a step in the right direction. So that would probably yeah. take place. Um, just hypothetically, if Mr. Chilker, after the fact, decided he wanted to build a porch, he could do that. Mm -hmm. Well, within the limitations of lot coverage, and I think that may be a different issue. Okay, but uh, because he's barring in the shore, because he's in the shoreland zone and in the dune. In Barring any other issues, area. yeah. Yeah, so, so there are some issues there that, but from a design perspective, yes. And just so I understand that how it works. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I think I share the same opinion that, that you've heard. I think if you ask me personally, I like the position where it sits as shown because it is more in alignment with the quote-unquote character. It is right in line with the other buildings, and it seems to make more sense. But I think from a legal perspective, it's difficult for me to agree to it because I'm bending the rules to do it. So it wouldn't make me comfortable that I would approve it because it doesn't meet today's criteria as the standard is today. It meets the two pieces. Right, it's both pieces. And I, I, don't, I can't with a straight pay, face, much like Mr. Richard, pass it. I don't think it meets the hardship criteria because I don't, I don't even think you'd get close to answering the questions so I'd be able to say yes, just because of the circumstance. Now he's caught in the middle. I know that's difficult. And I prefer it the way it is, but I don't think I could vote for it. Um, and no, I, I, I totally agree with that. I, I actually would much rather see it further forward, but especially with all the work that's going, gone into these new regulations, I hate to start walking all over them already. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually why I thought it was a good idea to, to entertain <laughs> it, is I thought it would, if that meets, it brings it more in compliance with the new rules. But again, I hadn't read the rules about the porch. Right. And so if it met those both rules, hey, that's a win-win. At yeah. least it's a discussion and tying it back to the original variance, we could argue that we're going oh, forward. That's, to me, the dilemma. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I don't just, see it. If I may, just, just as sort of a, a, a point of illustrating what could happen, if you look at the house across the street, the, the, the one that looks like a lighthouse, yeah, you see how it's got the one-story section on it that's down by the street? Mm -hmm. If Mr. Chioke, not that I'm advocating that design in any way, shape, or form, no. but, but just from the, the, the components of the home, if Mr. Chioka had a one-story piece similar to that that could be called a porch, an enclosed porch, for example, that could have potentially met the criteria to move that up to an eight-foot setback. Would that require that to come back? It, it actually wouldn't if it met all of the other criteria. Um, the, the problem is, in a way, under the new under the new ordinance, that would meet it, but the uh, eight-foot setback on Bayview <laughs> wouldn't. So 
So right. it's still, you know, he, he's got a tough chance there, and everybody with a corner a lot down there still has a tough chance. Mm -hmm. We haven't eliminated, you know, all of the, all of the, the difficulties, but have reduced them um, to, a, to a great extent. But I just wanted to point that out, that if there had been that single-story component that maybe could have been, I mean, you could almost envision that as a porch on the gray house. I don't think it is, but right. you it's could have not, had. It looks like it. You could yeah. have had something that looked like that, and I think moving that closer to the street would have made sense. Um, uh, even if it wasn't a porch, you c you could have sort of said, okay, it's not two stories or three stories high being moved to eight feet. It's it's a single story component similar to that, which is not unlike a porch. And right. you know, you might have been able to to bend that, that around as a possible way, but it's very difficult because that's clearly a, it's a box structure, it's the principal um, facade of the house, mm -hmm. and, and that makes it very difficult. Again, he can get the 18 feet, which is better than 20 um, with that, but, but without any action of the board. Right. Well, let me open up to the public. There's no public here, but I'll open it to the public. Anybody wish to speak? We do have a couple of letters. Three letters, to be precise. Uh, they're all uh, copied, and uh, they're all in favor, uh, basically, from the Griffins. Uh, Schisler, uh, Beth Schisler, and uh, Margaret Donovan. At, uh, Fifty-eight. I'm sorry. At Fifty, forty-eight, and forty-six, respectively. Those, by the way, are the, all the properties that are, not all, the three of the properties that are immediately across Bayview. So the ones that are going to be looking, they're right here. They're going to be looking that way. Yeah. No phone calls or. Mm -hmm. I did have a phone call from a neighbor, and I, forgive me, I didn't write down it. Her first name was Maureen, and I, forgive me, I can't remember her last name. Um, she, she only asked for an explanation of the appeal. She was in favor of the project. She was in favor of the project before. She still is in favor of the project. She didn't understand the abutters' notice, and she needed an explanation of what exactly we were talking about. But it didn't impact her her opinion on. She's not here, so you did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was in Florida. So oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> I didn't expect her. No close the public hearing part. Maureen O'Brien. Yes, thank you, yeah, Brian. Thank she, you. Her house, by the way, is this. <coughs> so, for expedient sake, <coughs> um, we can go through the criteria if you want. You could just say withdraw and we won't move on, and that would be my advice. And the board sees it differently, but I think it's pretty obvious. I, I think it's obvious. You're absolutely right. And uh, if it pleases the board, we'll just withdraw the application. And it's uh, I don't I'm, think we need to go I'm through the formalities. That, uh, we accept Mr. Right, Fisher's yeah. request to withdraw the application. Any discussion? All in favor? Action. Great. I appreciate the opportunity to just come here and uh, we'll share your time with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any uh Again, uh, I apologize, but I can't remember the appeal. Do you remember the, the one Cliff Street appeal? Yeah. Um, that was sort of just was hanging out there. We'd tabled it. Yeah. Um, I talked to the designer, Kathy Joyner, this week, and um, I didn't receive an actual letter from her yet, uh, but that will be withdrawn, so I think we'll probably have that for next time. I just wanted to, you had asked about the status of, yeah, of that appeal. Out there with so I, I believe it will be withdrawn, and we'll have that letter for the next uh, uh, next board meeting. Is that the Holton Street? Julie Barber. Bob, Julie, Julie Barber, Barber One, One Cliff Street. Street. That's appeal number two. Five, five, eight. Appeal number 2558 is and going to be withdrawn. That was by the Hidden Beach Inn, right? Yes. And that's what we're all about. People yes. Know, um, yeah. so Diane Garifano. I just remembered the last meeting, or maybe it was even the meeting before that, that somebody had asked what the status of that was, and so I did contact her to, to find out if they were coming back with any changes or revisions or, or what have you, and uh, she said that they would be withdrawing that. Okay. So we'll go we'll to the official. Um, these ordinance rules go into effect when? Are they have any They're already effective. They went, 12 they went in, into effect at midnight. Okay, good. Uh, we did a lot of studying to do. 
Yeah, I would I would encourage the board to look through that. Um, it's no doubt <coughs> different than anything you've probably looked at before, and, and, and um, it'll take a lot of getting used to. But but keep this in mind that hopefully if if it works the way we intended, you won't have to use it a whole lot because there won't be a lot of appeals coming. I don't think I don't think that it's going to eliminate all the appeals, no. but if we are able to reduce and allow reduce the number of appeals and allow people to do more things with a little more flexibility, um, it's it's rid in some ways a little more rigid in certain areas, but it does address the setback issue and it also addresses um, uh, some of the the desire for the Higgins Beach community, the residents of the Higgins Beach community, to try to preserve some of the character that mm -hmm. is quickly quickly disintegrating down there due to, to you know to more modern structures and, and things of that nature. And there was a definite desire um, by the residents down there to try to preserve some of that character, and that's what uh, the consultant team that we hired um, really tried to do. And um, we feel like. Uh, it's pretty impressive that uh, the work, number one, y you pl managed it perfectly. It all, it's exactly as the way it was supposed to play out, played out. It went to proper proceedings. Um, I intentionally did, did not read it because I didn't want, it's not m in my opinion, it's not our call, but this is the council's call. So I didn't want to have an opinion on it because I know a lot of the counselors. So I think the process is fantastic. And I think the result of helping the town just in general is smart. And I think it's, it's a good example of the town working with the people to make their lives better. And you don't see that very often. Yeah, I'd like to thank all those who were involved in, uh, in all the, the hard work that they put in uh, to make this thing happen. Brian, any idea how many hours were put in to create that? <laughs> God, I, I don't. It was, it was, I'm sure uh, our town planner, Dan Bacon, put in countless numbers of hours just doing rewrites and, and working with the consultants on on editing and, and tweaking and changing the, the consultant team put in you know a lot of time into this um, we got a lot of favorable comments from the residents and people that attended the the charrettes they loved the process they, they loved that public process they loved the yeah. charrette yeah, process um, the little breakout sessions and the workshops and posting stuff up on the walls and taking a look at it. That went very well. I've been involved in a lot of those over the years and in another life. I'm a recovering economic developer. <laughs> and, and we did a lot of that sort of stuff. And, and quite frankly, this was one of the best ones I, I had seen. It was best attended. Um, the, the feedback was very good. Um, so we got a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, uh, comments, positive comments about that. And uh, it really, my hat goes off to the resident community, the people that attended that, the comments that we got. That's what made that work. Um, right, but and, and the consultants did an excellent job. And by no means is this perfect. You know, it's it's going to continue to be. We're going to find out what <laughs> what what isn't <laughs> working with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like push, pushing mercury across the tabletop. You know, it's, that's. <laughs> we'll find some other things, but, but we'll continue to work at it. Um, Walt Wilson from the design company um, met with him two or three different times. Um, he, he, was, he had gone through it with a fine-tooth comb and, and had some, some questions from a designer's perspective. So we, we worked with him to try to eliminate some of those issues. So um, I think all in all, I'm just pleased that we got it in place before the next building season. And, so I expect, you know, through January and February, we'll see a lot of applications come in, and we'll have a chance to actually apply those standards to some applications that come in. We'll struggle with it. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I get I get stumped every day. People call with questions on it every day, and I get stumped. I have to go back and study and look at it. But that's tied to that. It, yeah. Tied to that. Does it make sense for us if the next meeting is either uh, not a lot of appeals? or a subsequent meeting, would it make sense for us to read these and then actually have a meeting have to a discuss? Workshop. Yeah, exactly, a workshop on how this affects our decision-making process? It probably would. Yeah. Okay, so I agree. would you want, if we, let's use an example, for out of the, why don't I put a, a standard? If we look like we're gonna have a meeting that's only at one or two appeals that are gonna be relatively easy, why don't we plan on if it gets done before 8.30, 
on that time. You'd like to tag we'll, it on. We'll tag it on to sure. that. If not, we'll figure out another way of doing it. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So we can kind of keep it loose through January and February and see if January's meeting comes up with a relatively light agenda, we could plan exactly. to do it then. Uh, if not, we'll push it to, to February. If February. If February comes and goes and we haven't been able to do it, maybe we'll need to schedule a, a pre-meeting workshop. Yeah. And it'll give there. us a chance to get a handle on what we're... I think we'll all, it'll give us a rhythm and at least understand the terminology. You know, the, the definition of a porch all by itself could yeah. take up four pages. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting for me. So yeah. In any event. And, and as you guys read through it, if you have any questions, you know, fire them off in an email or give me a call, and, and I can at least, we can, we can discuss it, you know, amongst two or three of us at any point, and even before um, a workshop, I'm happy to, because it's good practice for me to, to work through. I don't That's know true. what kind of questions I'm going to get, quite frankly. Right, and we might well, have what we could do is we could do a stump the bland. <laughs> <laughs> and now they're just coming with a bunch of questions. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> any, any comments from the board members? Oh, uh, not from the war members, but one more thing. Come in. When after you got, I just wanted to point out we have some some people who are whose terms are expiring, and and Mr. Loisel's actually going to be termed out uh, with three consecutive terms, I believe it is, um, and I think Mr. Crockett and Mr. Richard, their terms are just expiring. They're not termed out. Um, Mr. Richard has indicated that he would. Um, Sign up again. And he's um, a valuable member. I, I twisted his arm pretty hard. <laughs> um, I don't know about Mr. I haven't had that conversation with Mr. Uh, uh, Crockett. But the reason I bring it up is um, the policy in the town has been that uh, board members may stay on until someone can be appointed to replace them. Right now we have. We have one person in the queue, I believe, but I have not seen an application or have not gotten any word on it. I have gotten a verbal indication that there's one person in the queue. We actually need two because we're currently down one. What I'd suggest is so that a plea for appointments goes out to the public, to the board, anybody that you know that you you believe would have an interest in serving. Um, so if Mr. Crockett doesn't serve, we have two spots? If, if, th if three spots technically because of Mr. Loisel. Yeah. Well, the reason why I'm asking is what I'd like to, if the board agrees with this, I'd request of the appointments committee of the council that they don't replace Mr. Loisel until they fill the other two holes. And that way we've all, we've got a, a solid board here if, if it takes longer That's than we'd like. Yeah. So that if there's a hole there or if, if Mr. Carcott doesn't want to come up. Good idea. That way, we're not losing a talented person. Uh, I think it is fair, Mr. Chair, that I step back to an alternate role so that the person that's the alternate, first alternate now, would take a role at the board level. I think it'd be right to step them in, and I'll still be right behind them, giving my not wanted but given opinions. I would say uh, only if we have at least three people, uh, three experienced people already on the board. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, let's play. Uh, that's a good question. Let's play that out as it plays. I'll, t I'll take any role you would like me to to as take. As you hear, gladly fill in. Good. Thank you for staying on in the interim, and we're looking forward to you coming back and reapplying <laughs> one year from today. You sure? Yes. All right. Um, <coughs> anything else from anybody? Any none. Do have a motion? Wish everybody a happy holidays. Uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. That. Yes. Hanukkah is still Thank going you. on. It's the fourth candle. Might even be more than that now. Um, so happy Hanukkah for those who celebrate that. Merry Christmas and happy New Year. Uh, motion. Uh, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Action unanimous. Thank you very much. Have Thank a good you. night.